Hey there, fellow classic comic collectors. As always, I'm Scott Harris King, and today I have a big one. It's also a bittersweet one, because today I'm starting to show you my complete run of Doctor Strange, starting with Strange Tales 110. It runs for 25 years of Doctor Strange continuity. I've got all the way to the end of Strange Tales Volume 3, depending on how you look at it for now so there's where the bittersweet comes in i've actually sold the comics that i'm showing you today yes i just sold off my run of strange tales 110 through dr strange number 183 um i love dr strange i love these stories i've already purchased the omnibuses for all of these issues plus all of the shield issues as well to replace these outgoing comics However, as much as I love these comics, um, as you know, my focus uh, recently has really been shifting a little towards making comics, and um, I'm still trying to downsize my collection anyway. I'm also about to turn 50, and I'm feeling that thing where like I can't take it all with me. I'm just the custodian of things. I had to make a lot of hard decisions about what's important to my collection, what's important to me, uh, where... Um, my priorities are and so uh, when I was looking at what to keep and what to sell to raise some money for the comics that I'm making there were some other books that were more important to me to keep so ultimately I have ended up selling these um, and I just finished the Strange Tales run a few months ago so before I um, pack them up tomorrow morning I'm mailing them out by the time you see this I will have already sent these out but I wanted to show the entire run while I still have it, sort of to celebrate it and document it and um, just get this moment down where I do have the full run because uh, it is really cool. Um, uh, so yeah, it's a bit bittersweet. I'm very excited. The money that I got from selling these is going to allow me to do basically a whole comic, be able to pay an artist to do a whole comic. And so... Um, I try and keep that in mind whenever I'm selling this stuff, just the idea of, yes, there's there's tens of thousands of these back issues around, but I'm going to be able to use the money from selling these to bring something completely new into the world that's never existed before, an all-new comic that wouldn't exist otherwise. So that's very exciting as a comic fan, and so I'm really excited for that. So let's just start off. Here's the big one. It's Strange Tales number 110, the first appearance of Doctor Strange. Uh, I've told the story before. Um, actually, one of my earliest videos uh, was a convention report where I got this um, before I was even doing this as a regular channel. Um, if you look far enough back, I had done a video before I was doing regular videos about a convention that I tabled at. And uh, basically, the story is um, right next to my table where I was tabling to sell my comics that I was making. There was a dealer who was selling back issues and they had all these long boxes um, of back issues. And before the, the show even opened, I noticed that there was like a feeding frenzy of all the other dealers were running over to the table to look at this, these people's stuff. So I decided I wanted to get in on that. So I found a box that nobody else was looking in. I started pawing through it and I found this. Now it's about a 1.5. It's very tanned. Um, to the point where there's definitely some brittleness in the bottom corner here. Um, staples still attached. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very rough, but it's all there. And um, so I pulled it out and I said, hey, I've just got to ask how much is this? I was expecting, you know, there's no way I could afford it, right? And the dealer said, $10. <laughs> so uh, that was the fastest that that I've ever spent $10. So I did the $10 just leapt out of my wallet. Um, and, uh, my, it was a three day convention and I hardly sold anything. Like I lost a lot of money on my table fees, but this more than made up for it. Um, so once I had, I had given up on ever finishing my Dr. Strange run because I was figured I was never going to pay as much money for this issue as it was going to cost me. But once I had this for 10 bucks, I was like, um, okay, I guess I'll buy the rest of the run. Uh, so 
Now, the rest of my big keys are just as rough as this. Here's 111. Um, first appearance of Baron Mordo, second appearance of Doctor Strange. Um, this, again, it's about a 1.5. It's got a big chunk out of the cover here. Um, it also has an extra set of staples. It does mean the cover is firmly attached. Um, uh, weirdly, it has two completely unrelated date stamps on the cover. The front cover here, it says May 8, um, which I'm pretty sure is the correct date stamp. So it has a cover date of August. May for an on-sale date makes sense. Uh, so May 8, 1963. Um, it doesn't say 63, but that's what that is. Um, the, that's important because... The date stamp on the back cover, for some reason, says September 12, 1964. So it's almost a year and a half after the book came out. So I have no idea, no idea what that date stamp has to do with anything. I, I, I've got some guesses. Maybe it was at a secondhand store, but I don't know why they would put a date stamp on it. So I don't know what's going on. But um, this is one of the last books that I got when I was finishing this run. When I was selling off a big chunk of my collection and one of my big downsizing efforts about a year ago, I took some of the money from that to buy that and this. Um, this is one of a couple of these that I kind of want to replace already um, because this is the first Silver Age Captain America. Now, obviously Avengers 4 gets the big money because that's actually Steve Rogers' Captain America. But in terms of the real world, for like uh, readers, this is the first time Captain America... Um, had appeared in a comic uh, since 1954. So this is really the first Silver Age Captain America. It's just one of those things, you know, where um, when you read the story, it turns out it's a guy in disguise. He's disguising himself as Captain America. And this was a test run. Um, I don't 100% understand why they did a test run instead of just bringing him back. But obviously the sales of this were really high, and that convinced them to bring Captain America back, America back for real in Avengers number four. Um, again, very low grade, 1.8, 2.0. 2.0, I think, is fair. Um, it looks like the staples have come off, but actually they're both still attached. Um, and uh, just rough overall, but um, classic cover. Comic I've always wanted. A friend of mine, um, back when we were in high school in the 80s, um, late high school and, and into early college um, had one of these uh, and I never got one um, so I was jealous of that and so it was really exciting for me to finally get this a year ago and now it's going right back out the door um, here's my Strange Tales 115 now this is a classic important issue it's the origin of Doctor Strange right so Doctor Strange unusually for Marvel characters his origin was not in his first appearance so uh, he has three little short stories in 111, 112, and 114. Um, and then here in 115, we finally get his origin, which is an all-time classic Steve Ditko joint. It's just great, great, great origin. So this is a big key. Told the story of this before as well, but this was something that I got as part of a trade where I found something in a dollar bin that I ended up selling to a guy in part of a part cash, part trade, um, where I ended up getting, I think, $250 in cash, along with um, Amazing Spider-Man 122, um, uh, Marvel Premiere 15, Luke Cage here for Hire Number 1, uh, Werewolf by Night 32, all of those are gone. I sold all of those, but the one that I've been holding on to is also had this as part of the trade. Um, all the other one, key, those keys I've sold in already, but this one's finally going out the door. Um, that's obviously the best dollar bin experience that I've had. It was one of the inspirations for my dollar bin challenge, which I am hoping to finally bring back soon. The market has been so volatile. I just um, haven't really been able to keep up with that. And I've also been just so busy and stuff, but I do want to get back to that once I have a chance to research again, what everything's actually selling for now. Um, I probably lost about a third of the value of those books because of the market correction, but whatever. Well, you know, it's just fun to trade. So we're going to get back to that soon. But anyway, um, this is the last vestige of that great dollar bin find slash trade. Um, and just a great comic, a great story. Um, now we get into some of the ones that um, 
you know, I have to say I haven't really read because I've read all the Doctor Strange stories. But these Human Torch stories, um, even once it's Human Torch and the thing, they're crappy, man. I've read some of them, and they just uniformly are poo. They suck. So when I finished this run recently, I've got to admit, I did not open these to read the Human Torch stories. I've already got the Doctor Strange stories in reprint form. I don't need to crack these to read the good stuff. I would only be opening them to read the horrible horrible human tour stories i have read some of them but all of them have been bad so um i don't have a lot to say about most of these 117 this is kind of interesting up here this copy it says um newsstand uh distributor um there's a stamp that says that so that's interesting i do like yellow covers and of course all early marvels are all cool it's just boggling how these can be so bad compared to other like the fantastic four and of course the reason is obvious is because jack kirby's not really working on these um 118 guest starring the fantastic four guest starring the wizard 119 the rabble rouser and a startling mesmerizer wand this is a theme that um lee and whoever was working with him used a lot at the time the, the like um people with some kind of way to incite riots and mobs uh 120 human torch meets the iceman early x-men crossover with iceman um i think some of these early um x-men appearances are undervalued this is probably one of them um you know angel appears in um uh tales of suspense 49 um that's that gets a little more value because of it's an early iron man issue but um i think this one is still under the radar uh 121 it is interesting to see as you go through these the dr strange become more and more prominent on them so like dr strange doesn't even appear on either of these covers there's just a little blurb with his name right but here we actually get a doctor strange on the cover i think this might be the first time and there's more of him as we go along for the simple reason that his series is awesome <laughs> and the main series is crap like look at this it's three stupid acrobat guys fighting the human torch like it's the human torch i know he's a moron but like he's fighting like a uh, circus rejects and meanwhile there's dr strange on the side panel um like uh 123 this was originally owned by someone named albert lovell i know this because he's written his name on the cover this is the first appearance of the beatles so it's a minor key um and the condition of these is getting better as i go so these are a lot of these are like 3.5 4.0 4.5 they're better than those early keys were um, and these are still not that expensive, especially compared to other Marvel titles. So, like, um, uh, you know, if you look at this as being, like, Doctor Strange number 10 or whatever, um, it's very cheap. Uh, the problem with that is that it's not Doctor Strange number 10, because Doctor Strange is still only, like, six pages. And you have to wade through all this other nonsense. Um... The Human Torch and the ever-loving thing team up to battle the new menace of Paste Pot Pete. Oh, and by the way, there's a Steve Ditko masterclass going on in the in the backup story. So that's issue 124. 125, this is a cool cover. The Sensational Submariner tackles our two battling buddies human torch and the thing so the thing has become like a co-lead with the human torch because the human torch was just not cutting it um the thing is now in every issue uh we do get a nice doctor strange blurb slash button down here nice kirby cover um i think this is this is before submariner had his own um title before he took over the split book in issue 70 um of tales to astonish um, here's where things are really, really on fire in the backup story because 
It's 126, the first appearance of the Dread Dormammu, or Dormammu, like they say in the movies, but I'm not going to say it like that. So the first appearance of Dormammu, and importantly, Dormammu is on the cover. So Dormammu has been teased for a little while in the storyline. Um, it's not just the first appearance of Dormammu, though. It's also the first appearance of Clea. So this is like a double whammy. This is a book that I do think has a chance to increase in value. We saw Clea being teased in the post credit scene in the last Doctor Strange movie. So she's going to be a major part of Doctor Strange, the third Doctor Strange movie. I'm a big fan of Clea. Um, I really disliked the last Doctor Strange movie, so I don't have any kind of... Um, um, uh, confidence that they're going to do uh, a good job with Clea, but um, I'm very excited for that. This is one that I kind of like. I love having first appearance of female heroes. That's sort of like a little subset of my collection. So this is another one where I kind of wish I had another copy, or maybe I'll get another copy down the road. Um, but that's one of the bigger keys in the run. So um, you know. Uh, 127 more stupid things with the human torch and the thing but we also get the little blurb Doctor Strange fighting Dormammu it's amazing to me how long it took for Stan to realize it must have been difficult to figure out the sales right um, in terms of the book selling X how many people are doing it because they're Fantastic Four fans and they're buying it for this? And how many people are actually buying it for the Doctor Strange stories? But I figure Stan had to know relatively early that the Doctor Strange stories were just better. Like, they were just better than the main story. And you can see that slowly getting more and more real estate on the covers. Um, here's another one. This is a cool one. It's got Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch, but they're still listed as being two of the X-Men's greatest foes. So this is before Avengers 16. So this is actually part of their transition to become heroes because what happens in this issue is they go to the Fantastic Four um, and they're not actually looking to fight them. They basically, I think, they want to kind of become heroes and defect and there's a misunderstanding. So... This is kind of sets up the events of Avengers 16. So um, for Scarlet Witch fans and Quicksilver fans and Avengers fans, it is an important issue. This is one I've had in my collection for quite a while as an Avengers fan. Um, so that's a really cool issue. Uh, 129. Um, I actually just bought this because I can't find my other copy of 129. And I was like, I don't want to hold up a four figure sale because I can't find a stupid, like the crappiest issue in the whole run. So I spent 20 bucks or whatever to buy another copy. Eventually I'm sure I'll find the other one that I had and then I'll sell that on eBay or I'll give it to someone in a giveaway or as part of a, um, uh, an AOK -okay or something, whenever it is, I find that. But in the meantime, I just bought this 129 with the terrible trio. It's a guy in a suit it's an angry looking guy who's not in a suit. It's a dude in a turban. And they, they're actually tying him to the railroad tracks uh, like a snidely whiplash. Again, I don't feel a lot of fear for the thing and the human torch when they're dealing with these chuckleheads. Issue 130, very important for two reasons. First of all, for the first time, Doctor Strange is the main image on the cover. And secondly, this is a Beatles appearance in the Human Torch story. So this is the first issue where Doctor Strange is the, is the lead image. Again, we're getting this evolution where it's slowly becoming apparent um, that uh, the Human Torch series is not good and is not selling that well. The Doctor Strange, I know they were getting a lot of like fan mail and letters and response from like people at like universities and things like that like it had a big following um and so we're seeing that take over and this is all part of a, a great big storyline um with ditko the, these stories are excellent um 
131. This is kind of a cool cover. The Mad Thinker. Get the little Doctor Strange box. It's neat. Um, again, the storyline going on in the background here is is a is a long. You know, he's only got six or eight pages to work with Ditko, so he's doing uh, he he's doing this um, episodic uh, epic that runs through a bunch of issues. And if he had the space, I'm sure it would have taken a lot less time to do it. But that all builds up. Um, and we'll we'll show what it's building up to in a minute. Here's one thirty two. Baron Mordo fighting Doctor Strange down here. 133. Um, this is the first cover appearance of Clea. And um, he they almost get equal billing, but not quite. The writing is definitely on the wall for the thing in the human torch. You know, this is issue 133. They've only got one more issue left. Um, strangely enough. Doctor Strange is not on the cover of 134. Instead, they their big their big draw is they wanted to make sure everyone knew the Watcher was in this issue. What's interesting is that the actual villain in this issue is Kang the Conqueror. So again, this is one where I actually have two copies of this, so I'll probably keep the other one because I am a big Kang fan. And particularly with um, the movie coming out, um, Issues with Kang are all and uh, are all going up. This um, I don't know the exact timing. I'd have to look it up. I'm probably wrong about this. I think this is the third appearance of Kang. He's in Avengers eight. He's in Avengers eleven. There may be like a one panel cameo of him in Avengers sixteen because they showed a lot of villains reacting to what was happening. Um, but I'm pretty sure this takes place before the events of Avengers 23. So uh, I think this might be the third appearance. It's a little hard to say because um, with all the Ramatut stuff and the idea that maybe Kang is Doctor Doom in the future, um, he did tend to appear here and there in just very small like, cameo roles. So I'm sure someone will answer in the comments on this. I'm just too lazy to research. All right, now here's another big key, super important. It's Strange Tales 135. Now, when I started putting my run together originally, I was actually putting it together for the, for the S.H.I.E.L.D. run. This is the first appearance of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is the issue where Nick Fury is in the present as the um, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. And it's awesome. Uh, now, Nick Fury in the present had previously appeared in Fantastic Four number 21. And in that issue, um, he's working for the CIA. That apparently was an idea that they really liked. And there was a big spy craze, of course, going on at the time. So they decided to create S.H.I.E.L.D., which is kind of like, you know, that everyone is using these acronyms. It's like the man from UNCLE. Um, so they have S.H.I.E.L.D. It's the first appearance of HYDRA as well as in this issue. So first S.H.I.E.L.D., first HYDRA, um, first appearance of Nick Fury's eye patch, And uh, it's... First issue in a great storyline. The initial S.H.I.E.L.D. storyline is absolutely top-notch spy work stuff. Um, and in this issue would go to a, a pure split book. I didn't really look through the previous ones, but the Doctor Strange strip now is, is half the book. We get more space for, for Ditko to do his Doctor Strange stuff. And um, is right in the middle of this epic Adormammu um, storyline where, where we're about to introduce Eternity for the first time. And everything's building up there. And this this comes in as the new lead. For my money, this is Strange Tales is by far the best of the split books. But it's one of the best books Marvel's putting out. Every issue has something awesome in it. And the, the mix, the contrast between this, the the high-tech spy stuff in the S.H.I.E.L.D. strip with the magic of the Doctor Strange is just perfect. So, like, starting with this issue, Strange Tales, like, takes a quantum leap where they dump that stupid Human Torch garbage and they bring in, like, top-notch stuff. So this run is so cool starting with that issue. 136. S.H.I.E.L.D. still taking the main billing. Doctor Strange still getting secondary billing. Um, that's going to change in a little bit, but a little, a little bit too late. 
137. It's a John Severin cover. John Severin shield cover. We just get a little tiny Doctor Strange down here. The shield strip, I think, was, was doing really well. Um, and so we don't get anything about Doctor Strange on the cover of 138 at all, other than his head in the box. There's nothing about Doctor Strange here. And it says, Strange Tales starring Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, it, um, which it, it did have that logo in here as well last time. It's not saying anything about Doctor Strange. That's about to change. 139... Um, we do get Doctor Strange. It's kind of an odd cover. Doctor Strange is looking at the splash page <laughs> from the comic. This kind of feels a little half-assed, i got to say. But again, both of these storylines are absolute kicking butt. Um, and now we, we get more issues in a row with no Doctor Strange on the cover. But again, great. The end of Hydra. It's Spoilers, it's not the end of Hydra. But this story is fantastic. Um, and I think beginning next issue, we start a new story, 141. I could be wrong, but I believe this is the first appearance of The Fixer and Mentallo. Um, we get a new storyline where the two of them have teamed up uh, to try and take down S.H.I.E.L.D. This story also very good, not quite as good as the, as the first one. That first one's just it, it just, it just moves, man. 142, and here we have a Mentallo and uh, the Fixer on the cover of this issue. 143, you know, notice no Doctor Strange on any of these covers. But this Doctor Strange story going on is, is a Ditko, it's an absolute Ditko classic. It's the Doctor Strange storyline. Eternity first appeared in 138. I forgot to actually mention that back in this issue. And so the storyline with Eternity and Dormammu and Baron Mordo and Doctor Strange, all that stuff is still going on in the background in all of these issues. Um, here we get actually S.H.I.E.L.D. fighting a guy called the Druid, so they do put Doctor Strange on the cover, and it says, if you think Doctor Strange is the only mystic in this mag, wait to see the Day of the Druid. Um, so little nod to Doctor Strange. 145, with <laughs> classic Stanley title, Lo, the eggs shall hatch. That's a pretty stupid title. Um... They really like these really cluttered fight scenes on these covers. I'm not a big fan of that, personally. All right, and here is a super important issue. Now, starting with this, we've had all these issues in a row with no Doctor Strange on the cover, right? Or very little. And then all of a sudden, we get 146. It's the first issue that has a Doctor Strange full cover, it's also Steve Ditko's last issue on the book. So this is a Ditko cover. Um, I believe they've taken his artwork from the interior to put on the cover. Uh, and as it says, the end at last. So this is the end of the giant epic that's been going for like issues and issues and issues for like over a year, I think, in the, pay, in the, in the backup story. Um, finally comes to a, a climax here in this issue. Ditko stays at Marvel long enough to do this, um, and then he leaves. So, uh, you know, the there's been a lot of talk I've seen among Spider-Man fans and collectors about how the last two or three issues of Spider-Man um, are not as good as the other ones, the like uh, 36, 37, 38 that Ditko did. Just not, like, not, not uh, really feeling it. Um, I wonder if he actually stayed at Marvel because of this. Like, he was just phoning it in on Spider-Man because he wanted to stay at Marvel long enough to finish this Doctor Strange storyline. Just a theory. I don't know. But, uh, super important issue again. First cover, Doctor, full, first full Doctor Strange cover, end of this classic storyline, last Ditko issue. Uh, 147. Now, starting with that issue, 146, we actually start alternating covers. This is something that they were doing on that they started doing at the other on the other split books at the same time. 
Previously, all of the other split books would have split covers. We just haven't been getting them here. Um, but here we go back to S.H.I.E.L.D. for number 147. This is a great underrated run. I was able to get most of this run pretty cheap because I started buying them up in like 2008. Um, and I would go to shows and get these for like five bucks each. Um, even stuff like my 135, like that run I got probably in 2013, I got like 135 to 141 and they're all, the 135 is low grade. It's like a 2.5. The other ones are like in the four range and I got that whole run for $5 each. And so nobody, nobody cared about any of these. Now there's a bunch of minor keys in these later issues because of all the TV and movie stuff, but for decades nobody cared about this which is boggling once you read them because they're so awesome um here is another dr strange cover enter kalu uh first appearance of kalu and i'm actually a big fan of kalu now eventually when i get to the end of these dr strange complete run madness videos we're going to circle back to Kalu because he plays a major role in the strange, the 1987 strange tales run. Um, so the Dr. Strange continuity goes strange tales up to issue 168, change the title of Dr. Strange 169 to 183. Then he's in Marvel premiere numbers three to 14. After that, uh, he also he also has an important backup story in um, the first issue of Marvel feature, but we'll get to that in, in a couple videos. After Marvel premiere, uh, he leaves Marvel premiere and gets his own title again, Doctor Strange. This is in 1974, I think, uh, and then that series runs 81 issues up until 80, 86 or 87. And that series ends with issue 81, and then he immediately goes into a split book again. It's a new volume of Strange Tales where he's splitting the book with Cloak and Dagger. That runs 19 issues. The first 18 of those issues are a single story, and Kalu makes a reappearance after like 20 years um, and is totally awesome in that storyline. That is one of my probably two favorite. Like the original Ditko is probably the best. Uh, Doctor Strange story, but for me, that second Strange Tales run in the '80s is personally uh, is number two for me. A close second is because I love that run, and Kalu is awesome in that run. So, we'll talk about that more somewhere down the road. One forty nine, the end of Aim. Yeah, somewhere in here we got Aim's first appearance. I missed it when I was showing the, the covers. Spoiler alert: It's not the end of Aim. It wasn't the end of Hydra, and it's not the end of Aim. But there's a lot of important world building happening in the pages of S.H.I.E.L.D. here. And there's also important world building happening here in the pages of Doctor Strange because issue 150, Exit Kalu, Enter Umar. This is the first appearance of Umar. And she gets a really cool cover, like a really cool cover. Um, and Umar obviously is going to be a major Doctor Strange villain. This Dormammu's sister. Um, and you eventually discover it's Clea's mother. And so Umar plays a very important role for the rest of the Doctor Strange um, existence. Uh, so Umar, very important. And in terms of Doctor Strange, it's a it's a major key. Um, it, it hasn't really reached the values of a lot of these other books. Um, but um, who knows? Uh, so anyway, we're going to stop there. Next time around, we'll be looking at Strange Tales number 151 through Doctor Strange 183. And I stopped this at this particular point because starting with issue 151, uh, the S.H.I.E.L.D. strip gets uh, a bit of a facelift. These stories have been pretty good, but it's been dragging a little bit. It's about to stop dragging because next issue, a new young artist by the name of Jim Steranko takes over on uh, the shield strip of the 151. So we're going to start, we're going to cover those issues next time. So let me know what you think down below. I mean, it is sad for me to go through all these great books, realizing that tomorrow morning I'm going to be mailing them away. 
uh, never to be seen again. But um, it also brings me a lot of happiness to to um, go through all these and talk about them and um, just have this run. You know, there's a lot of runs I've had in the past that I no longer have, like my run of um, Thor. I had to the journey into mystery 95 through um, 502. I sold that before I started doing these videos, so I didn't get to show you that. Um, so there's a lot of runs that I've had in the past that, you know, I wish I had now or, you know, that it were important to me. This is going to be one of those. Um, but, you know, it's like um, you can't you can't keep everything. You can't take everything with you. Um, and so uh, even though I won't own these anymore, I'll always, you know, have that memory that I did own this complete one at one point. Um, and, uh, I still have the omnibuses. They're in the mail to me now. So at some point you'll see a, a, a new, um, haul video where I'm showing those off along with a bunch of other stuff that I've gotten recently. So let me know what you think down below. Um, and I'll see you next time.